Wassail, welcome to Rune Revival. Since Rob Words released his video, this channel has grown about 15%. If you are one of our new subscribers, please leave a comment. If you don't like ads or want to see our videos early, follow us on Odyssey. In our last vows video, we set aside these sliding vows. This video will put these keywords into tables along with goat vow and discuss a bit on why these runes are the best choices for these sounds. At the top of this table you can see the heading common sliding vowels. Beneath that are forms 5 and 6. As in the previous vowels video, form 6 being an even form indicates a rhotic form. The group numbers on the left are merely a reference point in case anyone you're talking to is not familiar with the name of the runes. The number 2.1, or if you prefer to bind one, indicates the Ors Ur bind rune. Its number is derived from how Ur is the first vowel rune in the footwork, and Ors is the second. Because the 10th vowel rune, your, always follows another rune, we've separated a section of the table specifically for it. Be aware that in some fonts, your places its cross closer to the center, whereas in others it's higher up. This often depends on how the font depicts the related rune, yer. On the right, you can see the rune Yor in various fonts, some of which are available on our website. First, let's start with the three easy vowels down the bottom, that being the Choice, Face, and Price vowels. If you have a merge between any of those in any of your accents, we'll discuss those later. Some of you have been asking why we're using the rune Yor in this position. Because there are a number of reasons for that, we've decided to make a separate video specifically on that rune. Look out for it in about a week or so. For those of you who've seen the last video, as we go through this one, think about where forms 5 and 6 should rank in the hierarchy of forms. If you have an opinion on that, leave a comment. Of these three, the price vowel is the one you're most likely to encounter a rhotic form for in words such as mire, fire, and perhaps even liar. Although some accents change that er into either the letter vowel or substitute it for the schwa, as happens frequently in non rhotic accents, keeping this as the touchstone spelling has a number of advantages. First, it helps new learners follow the pattern of forms. Second, by adhering to a more historical pronunciation, speakers of various dialects are still usually able to recognize it, even if they themselves say it differently. Third, it makes merged forms easier to understand, as you'll see in the next video. The rhotic form of the face vowel is found in some accents in the word mayor as opposed to the word mare, which we covered in a previous video. This sound doesn't occur very frequently in English. You may instead find words such as Beirut or payroll, where in certain accents it can appear because of the face vowel being followed by er. The choice vowel never appears to be followed by the er sound in English, except in the lady's name Moira. If you can find any other examples, please let us know. Returning to Wells lexical sets, we next have the non-rhotic mouth vowel and the rhotic near vowel. For the mouth vowel, you will notice we're using the rune historically called ir, as that sound is rather difficult for most modern English speakers to pronounce. May we suggest that it may be better to call it our for modern English? That word is both clear across dialects and relates to its contemporary sound. The non rhotic form of the near vowel is the sound heard in vehement or vehicle in a variety of accents. 
the usage of this diphthong is comparatively uncommon in North America, but it still occurs in some dialects. Now the one you've been waiting for, the GOAT vowel. Remember that not all programs or fonts will be able to display bind runes, hence this digraph can be written ors ur rather than as the bind rune you see on screen now. Its rhotic equivalent is the boas vowel. I do not use that vowel in my accent because it has merged into the north vowel, so my apologies if that didn't sound correct. While the dialects which distinguish the force vowel from the north vowel do so in a variety of ways, in general, the north vowel is associated with the rounded open mid back vowel, represented by the rune ors, while the force vowel is associated with the close mid back rounded vowel. Note how in the vowel space, that vowel is midway between the vowel used for thought and north and the vowel used for goose. Consequently, even if you don't slide this vowel in your accent, it is logical to write it as a bind rune using those two runes. If you have the goal split in the goat set, we will discuss that next video. For now, even if you do think that the vowel in goal is slightly different to that in goat, for the sake of recognition across accents, you're still best off writing it this way. However, we will cover an alternative option if you desire it. The rhotic form of the mouth vowel is historically used in the word flour, as in the baking product. Some dictionaries may distinguish this from the flower in the garden. But even if you say them the same, be aware that this rune can carry a w glide, just as ur can. If you're not already aware, this rune was derived from that one. Just as with Maya and Cure, which we've discussed previously, we again here have a case where some non-rhotic speakers will be substituting the ur for the schwa, represented by Ethel. Alternatively, some speakers may be using the letter vowel. Despite that, can you see why we've chosen these words to represent the pattern of rhotic sliding vowels? Now to the question of where these forms should fall in the form rank hierarchy. Where would you put them and why? If you want to pause and take a moment to think about that, do so now before we go on. Ready? In the International Phonetic Alphabet, IPA, non-rhotic sliding vowels are represented by two characters. So in effect, they take twice as long to say as a normal short vowel. But in dialects which distinguish vowel length, they take roughly the same amount of time to say as a long vowel. Without going into detail, the basic reason for that is that a long vowel is effectively the same as a vowel sliding into itself. So a form 5 vowel can be ranked equally with a form 3 vowel. We've not yet discussed mergers within the same form, but to help your understanding for the moment, consider how in some dialects the mouth vowel can merge into the goose vowel, or the goat and thought vowels may be merged. Again, for those dialects that don't have the pain-pain merger, the word pain falls in the face set, whereas the word pain, as they pronounce it, falls in the mare set, as we distinguished it on the other chart. Similarly, as you may have guessed by how the force vowel frequently merges into the north vowel, form six vowels are equal to form four vowels, being the rhotic equivalents of forms five and three respectively. Perhaps this is easiest to see if we look at group 11, the vehement and near vowels represented by our. Returning to the table from the previous video, you will have noticed that group 3, ES, 
has the short form of the kit vowel, but no long form, unlike all of the other vowel runes. The reason for that is because where form 3 of group 3 exists, it is heard as a variation of the non-rhotic near diphthong, the sound used in vehement. Now obviously, is can't be written as a bind rune because it is just a bare stave. So for those dialects which do use a long form of this vowel instead of the diphthong, you could perhaps think of er as being kind of like a bind rune of double es. The only difference being that er is generally used before rhotic vowels, as in near, unless of course you have an accent where you say beard, distinctly from both the nurse vowel and the word beard, which uses the near vowel. From a historical perspective, the great vowel shift caused this formerly long vowel to diphthongize, hence why we have the vowel we find in vehement today, while this long vowel is almost totally absent from most modern English dialects. Here's a summary of this video. In the next video, we'll be discussing rarer sliding vowels, such as those resulting from merges or splits in various dialects. We'll also cover a little about consecutive vowels. To ensure you don't miss that, be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the bell button to receive notifications. Thanks for watching!